kids welcome to service this weekend and go ahead and get up on your feet and get ready for worship God can hang the stars in outer space Only He can make a rainbow from the rain Only God can part the seas to make a way There's nothing He can't do No, there's nothing He can't do Cause He can do anything, anything at all Giant too big, no mountain too tall. I know God is powerful. Yeah, anything He can do, anything, anything at all. Only God can hang stars in outer space. Only He can make a rainbow from the rain. Only God can part. Trust Him Well, what this means is we can trust Him Yeah, I know This means you and me can trust Him Because He can do anything, anything at all He can do anything, anything at all There's no giant too big too tall I know God is powerful Yeah, anything He can do anything Anything at all Who? Who? You know what time it is? It's time to hear a story Full of wonder There's so much fun We'll have learning to
Hi friends, I'm Zoe, and today I get to do something amazing. My dad is taking me to see the construction workers on our street. Maybe I can sit in their digger, and maybe even drive it. Coming through. Beep, 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 beep. This is the most exciting thing I have ever done. I have to wear this hat and this vest to protect me. You can see that this vest is super bright. When I wear this vest, people will see me and not bump into me. And this hat will protect me if anything falls from a pie. I can't wait! Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Zoe. Who? Who? All dressed for a big day, are you? I sure am, Ollie. I have to wear this hat and vest so it will protect me when I go see the construction up close. A hard hat can protect you. It's true. But I know someone special who protects you too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Oh, hey friends, I'm Justin the Mailman, and I am so glad to see you because, whoa, do I have a great story for you today. Are you ready for it? Well, let me put the story mail in the mailbox and... There we go. Today's true story from the Bible begins with a guy named Daniel. Daniel loved God and prayed to him every day. Daniel worked for King Darius, and King Darius liked Daniel, and they were friends. But this made some other guys very jealous and grumpy. Yep, see? They are mean and grumpy. They wanted to get Daniel in trouble, so the king wouldn't like him anymore. So they made a tricky plan. They tricked the king into making a law that no one could pray to anyone but him. The law said that everyone had to pray to the king. If they prayed to anyone else, they would be thrown into a den of hungry lions. Let me hear your best lion roar. Ready? One, two, three, roar! Wow! You were some scary lions. What was Daniel going to do? If he prayed to God like he did every day, he could be thrown to the lions. What do you think Daniel did? Do you think he stopped praying to God? No, Daniel did not stop praying to God. Daniel knew God was more powerful than anything and that God wanted him to pray. So. He kept praying to God every day. The mean, grumpy guys saw Daniel and went to tell the king that Daniel was praying to God and not the king. The new law said Daniel had to be thrown to the lions. The king had been tricked. He was not happy. He didn't want to throw his friend Daniel in with the lions, but that's what the law said. The king said to Daniel, I'm so sorry, Daniel. I hope your God protects you. So Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. The next morning, the king ran to the den and called, Daniel, did your God protect you from the lions? Yes! Woohoo! Daniel is okay. Wow! God is so powerful. He protected Daniel from the lions. Now you tell me, was God more powerful than the king? Yes. Was God more powerful than the hungry lions? Yes. God is so powerful. God protected Daniel and he has the power to protect us too. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who is powerful? God is powerful. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me. Who is powerful? God is powerful. That's the truth, friends. 
You better believe it. I'll see you next time. So there's your story, and it's all true. God's power protected Daniel from the lions, and God's power can protect us too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, Daniel had to spend the night with those scary lions. But God's power protected him. God's power is so awesome. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. You get it? Got it. Good. I'm going to go see the construction site. And I know God's power is going to go with me. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Psalm 147, five. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Psalm 147, five. Hey Calvary Kids, welcome to another edition of our game show, and today everyone gets to play. If your family is interested in playing one of our games, feel free to email me at the email address listed here, and we'll get you signed up for a future week. Ladies and gentlemen, who's ready to play another exciting round of Bible Backpacks? The exciting game of Bible trivia that tests your knowledge of Bible times and Bible stories. To win this game demands extreme focus. It takes brain power. It requires you to dance around with your hands in the air like you just don't care. The rules are simple. I'll show you two items and the name of a Bible character. You have to decide which of the two items that Bible character would most likely have put in his or her backpack. If backpacks existed in Bible times, if you think the correct answer is A, then just dance around like a crazy person. But if you think the answer is B, stand perfectly and totally still. Everyone got it? Great, let's begin. Our first Bible character is David. If you think David would have had a slingshot in his backpack, then dance like crazy. But if you think he would have had a cell phone, then stand perfectly still. Time's up! Who's out of breath from dancing? Well, it was totally worth it because you're correct. Because of David's faith in God, he was able to use a sling and stone to defeat the giant Goliath. Let's move on to round two. Our next Bible character is Ruth. If you think Ruth would have had barley in her backpack, then dance like crazy. But if you think she would have had pizza, then stand perfectly still. Time's up. Who's dancing? <laughs> You're correct. Nice job. Ruth was gathering barley when she first met her husband, Boaz. Here comes round three. Our next Bible character is Moses. If you think Moses would have had a surfboard in his backpack, then dance like crazy. But if you think he would have had stone tablets, then stand perfectly still. Time's up! Who's dancing? You should be standing still. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments on stone tablets, so he might have wanted to hang on to those. Here comes round four. Our next Bible character is Samson. If you think Samson might have had a comb in his backpack, 
then dance like crazy. But if you think he might have had dumbbells, then stand perfectly still. Time's up! Who's dancing? You're correct! Samson had long hair, but was super strong, so he probably didn't need to work out. Here comes round five, our final round. Our last Bible character is Noah! If you think Noah might have had a bird cage in his backpack, then dance like crazy! But if you think he might have had a snorkel, then stand perfectly still. Time's up! Who's dancing? You're correct! Noah had to keep track of lots of animals, so that may have come in handy. That's all we have for today. Thanks for playing Bible Backpacks! Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey yo, I'm Caleb, and today's adventure takes us deep into my Bible. These are God's words for us to discover and return to over and over. See, God inspired dozens of people over hundreds of years to write it all down. The stories and truths in this book tell how God loves us so deeply, he sent his very own son to live with us. The words in this book show how life works best when we follow God in all that we say and do. That's true wisdom. And I have five stories right in here to show us what wisdom can look like. We get started in the book of Luke. So here, Luke shares a story about Jesus as a boy. Jesus is God's son, but he wasn't born knowing and understanding everything. He had to learn to walk, to talk, to strap his own sandals, and he wasn't afraid to ask some pretty big questions. Next, we head back to the Old Testament and the book of First Kings. Here, Solomon has become king after his famous father, King David. Pretty big sandals to fill, huh? Solomon's young and knows he doesn't have what it takes just yet to rule an entire kingdom. So when God tells Solomon to ask for whatever he wants, Solomon thinks big, even bigger than victory in battle or castles filled with treasure or a PS5. Later, much of what Solomon learned was collected in our next stop, the book of Proverbs. Let's see how fast I can get there. <laughs> nice. Check out these incredible words of advice. Wise people see danger and go to a safe place, but childish people keep going and suffer for it. When you're excited or angry, it's hard to slow down and pay attention to the warning signs. But if you don't, you might be on the road to trouble. Now, 
Not everyone listened to this wisdom, including Solomon's own son, as we see in 2 Chronicles. Rehoboam has just become king of Israel. And he's thinking, how should I treat the people? And his father's old advisors tell him to be kind and generous. Sounds like great advice, right? Except Rehoboam says, nah, and instead asks his own party pals what to do. We wrap up in the New Testament, in the book of Romans. Here, Paul shares the wise words that God has laid on his heart. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Wisdom doesn't come from reading hundreds of books or solving complicated problems. It comes first from God. It means letting God guide your steps and change the way your mind works. And as you do, you can begin to live out true wisdom. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and me.
everybody, Haley here. And excuse me while I take a quick selfie looking all adventurous. <laughs> there, hope you like it. Getting likes is the most important thing, as you know. How else would you know if you're doing what's right? Oh, oh you do like it. Well, that's great, that's so sweet. Anyway, today we're learning about wisdom. I know, right? I like wisdom too. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Wisdom can help you know where to go, what to do, who to be friends with, what to wear, like this super chic leather jacket. Yeah, some love for the jacket. And how about this hat, am I right? <laughs> oh, uh oh, that's no good, huh? Well, this is my favorite hat. Oh well, the phone knows what's best, I suppose. How about this one? Oh, oh good, this one's better. <laughs> I'm always afraid this hat makes my head look too small. This girl I know, Iris, says I have a small head, <laughs> but I guess I'll forgive her. Anyway, what? You don't think I should forgive her? Well, what should I do? Get revenge? <laughs> you like revenge? Well, are, are you sure? I, I, I don't think revenge is very wise. I thought you were smart, phone. I need to rethink this whole relying on likes thing. And as we'll learn in today's story, there's a whole lot we need to rethink. Oh, be quiet. Back in a minute. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse two. If there was ever a man who thought he knew how to think the best thoughts, it was Paul. As a Jewish religious leader, Paul knew all the 613 Jewish laws inside and out. He was convinced he knew the exact right way to live. But then Paul met Jesus in a flash of light and thunder and everything flipped. Paul's entire way of thinking changed. Jesus is the son of God. Paul began to travel across the land, starting churches as he shared the amazing news about Jesus. He also wrote long letters, both to the churches that he had started and to ones that he had heard of or wished to visit. I, Paul, am writing this letter. Many of Paul's letters are collected in the New Testament, including a famous letter he wrote to the church in Rome. I long to see you. I want us to encourage one another in the faith we share. In his letter to the Romans, Paul shares the truth about what God has done for us in sending Jesus and how that can change our lives. Romans 12, 2 offers a big challenge. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you. And you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul knew all about having a mind makeover, but changing your thoughts isn't easy. Whatever you do, don't think about an elephant. Do not think about an elephant. You're thinking about an elephant. It's really hard to control your thoughts. When Paul says, don't live the way this world lives, he's saying, don't let this world push you into thinking and saying and doing things. Imagine that you're modeling clay. Modeling clay can be turned into all sorts of cool stuff, like this, or this, or even this. The problem is, no matter how much you shove it around and shape it, modeling clay doesn't form anything that lasts. And we all know how modeling clay ends up. Mixed up, dried up bits. We can get squashed too, when we let the world around us tell us how to act, what to say, what to wear, what to play. We run from one thing to the next without stopping to think about what really matters. 
That's why Paul reminds us next, let your way of thinking be completely changed. We all know it's really hard to change your thoughts just by trying hard. Yeah, there's only one way to make lasting change, and that's to let God work in your thoughts as well as in your heart. Imagine this is your brain, and throughout the day, it begins to boil with a gazillion thoughts. Oh, why do I have to get up now? I hate school. I can't believe I have Miss Wells this year. She's the most boring teacher ever. Everyone else has a better lunch than I do. I can't run a whole mile in PE. It's not fair I have to finish my homework before I can play my game. You can make all those thoughts change in an instant, but you can invite God to begin to change those thoughts for you. And as you spend more time focused on God's words written down in the Bible and spend time with others who follow God, your thoughts will begin to shift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Over time, new thoughts will replace the old anxious ones. God will begin to change you from the inside out. Now, you're no longer modeling clay. Instead of being pushed around from the outside, you have a brand new way of thinking. Paul writes, Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. When something difficult happens, you can stand strong and ask God to show you what to do and what to say. And the more you invite God to change what's happening in your head, the more you grow day by day in wisdom. Today's wisdom comes from the Apostle Paul. I think I'll turn you off for a while. You're a smartphone, not a wise phone. The Apostle Paul wrote, don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. A lot of people in the world do things just because everyone else is doing it. But Paul wrote that we shouldn't live the same way as the world. We should think differently. We should stand out even. When Jesus was here, he showed us a different way to live. A way where we don't just like, but love everybody, even our enemies. People were drawn to him because he was so different. And when we believe Jesus is who he says he is, that he died for us and came back to life in three days, the Holy Spirit will help us to change from the inside out. So if I'm being wise, I'm not making choices based on what the world wants. It shouldn't even be about what I want. I should make choices based on what God wants. And God wants me to love him and love others. But listen, Completely changing your way of thinking takes time. It's something you and God will be working on your whole life. So here's the one thing to remember today. Never stop growing in wisdom. Wisdom is a treasure you'll always be hunting for. And while you're hunting, ha ha ha, you'll need a cool hat. It's my favorite. I'll see you around. Bye. Zoe, sit. Good dog.